Hey guys, today we're gonna to be working on the E53 X5 headlight covers. As you can see behind me, this one is clouded really, really badly. Very common on the E46s, and you can actually replace them relatively simple, simply. But here, it's actually a little bit more difficult. Same principle applies, and it's not as common on the E53s. However, the same problem does happen. Today we're gonna to be replacing them with new, perfectly clear glasses. We're gonna go from this to this. Stand by, guys. Let's take this thing out first. Go from there. First, we need to remove the lower strip, and this applies to all 2000 to 2003 X5s that have the pre facelift headlights. First, you remove the clip just like that. On the top, you have two here, one there, one there, and on the bottom, you also have one here, and then also one right there. And then the headlight should pull right out. And you have to disconnect the low beam, the high beam, and the turn signal. Now that we have this sitting on a bench, you'll see that there are tabs here. These tabs kind of help hold the, the lens in place while the glue is doing its thing. As you can see, this looks like it's been replaced in the past, and we're going to replace it again. Uh, so what we want to do is basically clip off these old clips here, which then allows us to start using a heat gun and get around the edge and then slowly work the whole lens out. Um, this here will need to be fixed and we can do that shortly with the plastic welder. Now we want to use a heat gun at its maximum heat setting and go around the entire outside perimeter of the light. That's going to soften up the glue. And what you want to do is use a wide um, regular screwdriver and you want to slowly start to pry and twist without damaging the headlight. You can damage the lens, no problem, but damaging the headlight, you have to be careful. And just pry a little bit after you soften it up, just to make sure that what you're doing is right and you feel like it's giving, it's more and more give every single time. Now we're gonna turn the light upside down, or right side up in this case, and start working our way from the corner over because the corner's already warm, so we wanna keep that warmth and draw it up into the rest of the light. Go nice and slow, don't speed up. Going too fast is not gonna get you there any faster. You need to let the heat soak into the headlight and really, and really get everything nice and softened up. On this side of the headlight, there is a little Phillips head screw that needs to be removed. So put that aside, you will need it later. Now we can start con continuing to pry. Ah, there we go. As you can see, I left the heat gun on, and that's because I have heat on demand whenever I want it. There we go. Look at that, huh? And it should just slip out like that. All done. Now, part of the effort is to take the turn signal lens and put that into the new headlight. Um, there's a little bevel in here that lines up with the hole from the screw that we had removed earlier and it has to sit right inside of there. So we have to be careful that when we install that, that we are, um, that we are not uh, misinstalling it. So make sure that there's a little alignment pin here, that that pin goes into the right spot and that everything gets set into place in the new lens. Let's take this out for now. And this guy is trash. All right, so now we take this guy, we slip it inside of here, and make sure it sits in the right location. I'm peeling back the plastic on this because I don't want to touch the lens yet because I'm gonna be pushing up against the lens here um, as I'm installing this. So I want to just peel back the plastic um, so that when I do install it, I'm not going to wor be worried about getting um, sealant or anything like that on it. Uh, this is the sealant. This here is the sealant that I'm going to use. It's an ad a clear adhesive seal. Uh, it's a Permtex clear adhesive sealant, uh, silicone RTV, 80855, link down in the description. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a nice bead and put it all around the entire circumference, use my finger to bead it, and then you just push the lens on.
God, this moment of truth right here. Just push in and hopefully you can get a couple clicks of these guys. Come on. Go, oh, that's one. That's two. That's three. There's one. There's one. There's one. So I got all the clips to clip. Um, and now I could take off the plastic. And now I'm really, really glad that I kept the plastic on because I would have made fingerprints of Permatex all throughout this entire thing. And I'm glad I didn't. Um, so that's garbage. And then probably wanna clean up a little bit here on the top where I did get some. And you gotta do it quickly before it dries. And today is a really hot day. So the Permatex is going to start to uh, vulcanize probably within like 10 minutes. So you do have to keep that in mind. Um, and then when you're done, you just take the excess and you kind of just stick it around where it needs to go. Let's wait and then uh, let's reinstall. See how it looks. So yeah, so don't forget about that clip that we needed to replace. I'll show you how to do that. So as you can see here, we have a problem. We have a clip here. This one's the other one, but this one here is broken. And this is the clip as it was before. Um, you definitely can see that there is no additional bracing on these upper corners on this one here, you can see. This one doesn't have that. Um, that's just the way it was designed, which is why these inner ones break so frequently. So to fix that, the previous owner tried to use um, a lot of uh, um, uh, JB Weld. It didn't work, it just does not work. What does work is this. And this here is a plastic welder. And the idea is that you take this, this uh, tool here, you put the thing, the uh, coil that you're gonna be installing. And what it does is it actually melts. It heats up and it's like a controlled short and it melts the plastic, the interfacing plastic between one piece and the other piece and it melds them together with a wire wound inside. And it's actually very, very strong. So what we're going to do here is put this right where it belongs and we're gonna put this right where it belongs here, and you'll see that the wire is wavy, and the waviness of the wire allows it to overlap the two parts multiple times in order to get the best possible bond. So if I start here, I press firmly, and then I press the button, that, that uh, completes the curve, the, uh, the circuit, and you can see that it's actually getting hot and melting through the plastic. You wanna push with moderate force, until you feel like you've gone deep enough into the parts, then you let it go, let it cool off, and then you pull that out. And right now it's still a little bit warm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use another one. I think it's gonna be important to use another one just in case here. Right, on, right along the edge, press, hold. It's permeating, let it go. Hold, 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 hold. Let it go. And now, what you gotta do is clip off all of the wires. Looks good. Yeah, feels good, looks good. It'll work really well. Now that both of the headlights are done, let's go to the install. And there we go, guys. Basically, completely re uh, reinstalled and done. Um, there is headlight level adjustment that we will need to be doing for both the low beams and the high beams. And that is done 
by spinning these guys counterclockwise or clockwise. This one here is for the low beam and this one here is for the high beam. Luckily for us, we have a garage door that we can use and get our level for the headlights and make sure that we get the most out of our light output. So that's about it, guys. So guys, that just about does it for this E53 X5 headlight lens replacement. Hope you learned something, guys. My name is Frank Macaluso from Garageaholic and I'm out of here. Later.